Hello, my name's Judy and I'm an early years music, song and story specialist for the Scottish Book Trust. And I'm here today to read your fabulous wee story called The Runaway Pea by Kat Ann Poskett and Alex Wilmore. Should we go on a journey with this very, very cheeky little runaway pea? Let's see what happens. It's six o'clock and we're ready for tea. But look, what's that? It's a runaway pea. He pinged off the plate with incredible force, then slipped and went splat in a puddle of sauce. The carrots and beans were all laughing with glee. You didn't get far, you piddling pea. Just watch, said the pea. I've hardly begun. I might only be small, but I want to have fun. The pea shot away with a skip and a hop. Then into the dog bowl he fell with a plop. Climb, little pea, climb up the side. Quick before Boris's mouth opens wide. The runaway pea jumped amazingly high and so nearly landed in Boris's eye. Oh, Boris's eye's really big. He rolled along Boris's back in a flash, but a flick of the tail sent him flying off. Splash! Where am I? He wondered. His head really hurt. Get out of my tank, said Adele with a squirt. Oh, I think she's a bit cross. He fell on a mouse trap, which snapped with a bang and bounced off a cobweb that stretched and went twang. He came to rest on a high dusty shelf. So far so good, smiled the pea to himself. Surely there's nothing else left to go wrong. Then a fan started up and it blew him along. And what's that below with an orangey glow? It's the slot in the top of the toaster. Oh no! In fell the pea, unable to stop. Then the toaster pinged up with an almighty pop. Ow! cried the pea. My bottom's on fire! As he flew straight on into the tumbling dryer. Buffered and battered and bounced all about. The pea was so glad when he finally got out. He collapsed on a shirt that had newly been washed. Look out, little pea, or you're going to get squashed. Oh, that's a big iron. He tumbled and rolled along out of control. Under the fridge to a dark, sticky hole. Too weary to move, he just let out a groan. Oh, they got a strange feeling that he wasn't alone. Out of the gloom came mysterious shapes. A dried up banana and two mouldy grapes. Oh dear, said the pea, what happened to you? We were naughty, they said. We all ran away too. We don't recommend it, they whimpered quite sadly. You'll get old and wrinkled and start to smell badly. I've changed my mind, said the runaway pea. I'll get back on that plate and be ready for tea. You won't, said the grapes, because you've been on the floor. Runaway pea, you're not loved anymore. The little pea trembled. He knew it was true. There was nowhere to go for him and nothing to do. Poor wee thing. Helpless and hopeless and feeling forlorn. His tired eyes closed. And he gave a big yawn. <sighs> but a magic thing happened while he was asleep. He woke up beside the recycling heap. The soil was so soft and the weather was sunny. And soon the pea started to feel a bit funny. Under the ground he was sprouting some roots. And out of his top, he was shooting some shoots. Ooh, 
The shoots all had pots and inside every one was a party of new peas all bursting with fun. So if you should ever hear popping or splat or a splosh in the sink or a yow from the cat or a rappity tap in the cupboard then please don't panic. It's only those runaway peas. Wee the end. And guess what? No peas were harmed in the writing and making of this book. Yippee! And I think I'm going to have some peas for my tea tonight. I wonder if them have ever been a runaway pea. We'll have to wait and see. Thank you for listening to the story today. Hope you all really enjoyed it. See you again next time. Bye.